episode, I'm gonna be talking about how I use stations in my petite technique class. Um, so whenever I do stations, I don't use it to um, teach new skills. I use it to work on maintenance of skills that they already have, or we're working on um, like the proper execution and mastering these skills. Um, so right now, with the petites, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, um, I talk about how I do scrunchy goals with the girls. Um, my junior ones, my junior twos, they have individual goals that they set for themselves. But with my technique class, we have two goals that we're that we're um, working on all the time as a class. And so once they master um, those skills, then that's how they get um, their their scrunchy. So right now, the two skills that we're working on in the petite class is a toe raise um, and a double turn. So the toe raise, I was really um, hesitant to even teach them in the beginning because I was worried that they wouldn't be able to pick up on it because they are a little bit younger and that is a more difficult skill. Um, but you know, these kids are incredible and I literally had one of my junior twos come in and show them how to do it because I obviously cannot do it anymore. Um, and just by watching them, then we talk about the technique of how to do it. A lot of it is like monkey see monkey do. So they will follow along with what the older dancer who's mastered that skill, um, they'll follow along with what she is doing, um, in hopes of like recreating, you know, the skill that she's doing. So, um, that's what we did with our toe stands and then we're also working on our double turns right now which everyone in the class has mastered a um, single turn on the right and the left so obviously like the next natural step is for them to start working on those double turns now with technical skills a lot of the times um, my petite technique classes are 45 minutes long I cannot have an entire 45 minute class where all we do is turns that's not realistic um first of all it's not realistic for me to expect them to pay attention for 45 minutes working on one skill and number two it, that's not a good and effective way to like manage your time by working on just one skill because there's a lot of other skills that they need to be working on they don't just have turns like in routines that they need to work on they have a lot of other skills like technical skills that they need to be mastering so what I do whenever I decide that I want to do stations, which we have been doing this a lot lately because the girls really like it. Um, I don't spend my entire time doing stations. I usually only dedicate the last 15 minutes of my 30 minute class, or sometimes I even um, dedicate 30 minutes to it, um, depending on what other things we have planned for that day along with like my lesson plans. So the first couple of minutes we come in and we do a group stretch. Um, we work on our splits. That's something that like, they have to get. Um, flexibility is crucial. Um, you peak your flexibility at age 11. These are my five to eight year olds. So it's going to be, it's going to come a lot easier to them now whenever they're this young rather than waiting until they're a little bit older. So we are working on the splits. That's what we do. Like first thing when we come in, we warm up, we do our splits. Then after that, um, since the technical skill that we're working on right, right now is our double turns, we will review technique for turns and warm up our turns together as a class. Um, once they are like, their brains are in class mode that we're working on these um, double turns, then we will break down into stations. So what I do is I split my room into three different groups. Um, I will have a, um, I take a mat from Miss Selena's acro room and I put it out and that's my first station. That's for them to work on um, toe raises. Um, we already know how to do toe raises. That's something that's we, that we've been working on for a really long time. That was our very first goal that we um, like an, initially started with them like a month or two ago. So a lot of the girls have already mastered that skill. So I don't need to take like a lot of the time to even review. So um, the mat will be toe stands. Then I will go and get um, two yoga mats. We don't really necessarily like use the yoga mats for anything. They just like block off a general area and then the dancer that's working on the skill um, can stand on the yoga mat to work on the skill. So when we do the yoga mats, I usually try to put in a flexibility skill for them to work on because again, we wanna continue working on, you know, all different types of skills, you know, throughout the class period. So um, for instance, like tonight, we will be working on bow and arrows. 
So if you're not familiar with a bow and arrow, a bow and arrow is where you, um, it's, it's very similar to a heel stretch, except for when you grab in a bow and arrow, you grab opposite arm, opposite leg, pull it up and then pull your arm through. Um, and that's a bow and arrow. And it is really difficult for a lot of these girls and to do it again, it's more of like an intermediate skill, um, for the girls to do, but we have all mastered heel stretches. So, you know, it's like the next step of what to work on. Then the last station that I have them do is a turn station. And so if you're at tur at the turns, then you're working on that double turn that, you know, is obviously another one of the scrunchy goals. So we have three stations. We have toe stands, then we have bow and arrow, and we have turns. Um, and so the girls are, they're actively working on a trick the entire time. So I'll break my group, um, my groups up by like however many kids like I want in each group. Um, usually I try to have, um, like four, four, five or six kids in each group, but I do have like a really large class. So we'll break them up into groups. They will have a certain amount of times that they have to do it like whatever skill they're working on like at their station and then they switch um they go to the back of the line the next person comes and then i dedicate anywhere from like five to eight minutes um on each station and then we switch so each girl gets to go to each station and work on that skill for like x amount of time for the night and i have learned that this is really really successful because number one it keeps them from getting bored and number two, it ha they are allowed to work on a variety of skills um, that you already need them to work on. And what I will do to avoid them from being like, Miss Lucy, come watch me, watch me, watch me do this, watch me, oh, you know, all that crazy stuff because they want to show off all the time because they're very proud of these skills. And although I'm very proud of them, I do not want to hear my name called 5,000 times um, in a row. So before we go to stations, I let I give them a whole big, you know, spiel and saying, um, I will come around and I'm going to watch everybody. You don't need to call my name because I'm already watching you. And if I if I think that you're ready to be evaluated at the end of the class for your scrunchie, I will call you out. But if you continue to call my name, I will not choose you to be evaluated. So that keeps them from, you know, calling my name 5,000 times um, and interrupting, you know, others that are trying to do the skill or taking up more time than, than what they, you know, should be dedicated to. So um, you guys are going to get a firsthand glimpse into that tonight. Um, and definitely feel free to implement this with any of your classes. We also do it with, um, it's really big with our acro class right now. We do stations in our acro class. That's where I originally got the idea from because the kids were so successful with our stations in acro that I decided to do this in my technique class. Now, again, this isn't something that I do all of the time. It's just something that we do occasionally. It's a great like change up to the normal everyday um, technique class. The kids absolutely love it um, and it encourages them to work on a lot of different things during one class, which is awesome. So I will see you soon in my petite technique class.
our acro classes were actually canceled this week because we have our acro teacher is on spring break with her college. And so I added in an acro station today just so that they can work on maintenance for some of the skills. So right now, right here, we have our toe stand station, which they're working really hard. Good job, Ava. Then right here with the blocks, we have our bow and arrow station, which again, they're working really hard. Then we have our turns. Tinsley, connect your pasta and let me see your beach ball, okay? Beach ball arms, beach ball. Yeah, you got it. Oh, almost, you had the correct arms. Let's work on getting that passe right, okay? All right, so then we have our acro station. What's happening over here? Okay, I'm asking, let me ask Knox first. I'm asking Knox first. Yes, sir, tell me. Okay, you did two, and whose turn is it? Okay, so come over here. I want you to work on your, your back walkover, okay? All right, see, problem solved. Nice job, Jayla. I love seeing those legs. That was beautiful. A spot? Okay, I can come spot you, okay? So hey, let me put my phone in, I'll come spot you, okay? All right. Hi, Emma. So that is our stations for today. Hello, darling. We are working very, very, very hard. And if they listen really well today, which they are, Ava, that's the wrong leg. That's the wrong leg for your posse. Much better. Be really tight out of that. If they do really, really well today, then we will improv the last couple of minutes of class. Um, we were really successful with our stations today. I did decide to add on a fourth station for acro skills, uh, mainly because the kids were really, really good yesterday. And our acro teacher is actually um, out of town this week. So all of our acro classes have been canceled and that is like one of their favorite classes. Um, so because of their good behavior yesterday, I added on a fourth acro station um, today in class. And it seemed to work really well. It just gave the girls like a little bit of extra time to continue working on those skills that they needed. Um, we did bridge kickovers and back walkovers uh, because almost all of the kids, if they have an acro skill, the majority of the time it is one of those kickovers or one of the walkovers. So it did give them a little bit of time in class today to continue to work on maintenance with those skills. Um, so today I used yoga blocks and spots as well as our um, cheese wedge mat, our cheese mat from um, our acro class, and then also like our foldable mat. That's the um, red and yellow one that you saw in the video. That's the one that I usually use for toe stands because it's like easy for me to like get back and forth in class. So um, I'm gonna link the description for the spots that we used in the, um, or I'm gonna link the, <laughs> I'm gonna link, put the link in the description below for the spots that I use in class. Um, they come in like a pack of 15. They're made out of rubber um, so that you can actually sanitize them and they don't skid along the floor. So when you put them down, um, unless you like pick them up or like, like scoot them like with a lot of force, they usually will stay put, um, which is great. And we use them all of the time in class just as spot markers or as like station markers, like that kind of stuff. So um, if you don't have those and you wanna invest in those, I will put them um, so you know where to buy them. Um, our yoga blocks actually came from TJ Maxx. Um, and then our acro mats, um, we bought through like, a, like an actual mat company. And then some of them we bought um, secondhand from a gym that was closing down um, in our area. So we got a really great price on them. So, um, just want to close out the vlog for the night. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about doing, um, stations, um, or any questions about how you can implement stations in your technique classes or any of that kind of stuff, just drop me, um, a question in the comment section below and I will definitely help you out with anything that I can. So thank you for watching. If you have not already subscribed, 
to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button and also click the little notifications button on there as well so you can be notified anytime we have a new vlog that is available, which I am trying to come out with um, a couple of videos a week. Um, like sickness has been going around a lot right now, so it's a little bit harder to edit. And then it also takes me a really long time to edit um, competition day vlogs. Our next competition that we have scheduled coming up is KAR, it's Kids Artistic Review. Kids Artistic Review is also one of my top five brands, so I'm super excited to see um, how we do this season. I love them, and I will also be doing another review video with them um, once the competition is over to let you guys know um, all of my favorite things about that brand, and then also any dislikes if I have them. Um, so thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're getting the not notifications, and we'll see you soon. Bye!